Hey guys, the day is finally here and we're now able to share our official review of the NVIDIA 3080 card. Right here we have an Asus 3080 Tough Gaming GPU. This is factory overclocked variant and is approximately 75 megahertz faster than a standard. In this video, we'll focus on gaming performance, including ray tracing and also some productivity tests. We have already published an unboxing video. If you're interested, the link will be in the description below. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing as we have a lot of content coming your way. Jumping straight into it. In the reveal presentation, Jensen referred to 3080 as the new flagship GPU with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM, which is the world's fastest memory. It also boasts third gen tensor cores and second gen RT cores, which are supposed to be up to two times faster. With all this in mind, he said that 3080 should be up to two times more powerful than 2080 at the same price. So we set out to check out how much of that is Engineer Jensen talking and how much of that is his marketing alter ego. Since we don't have a 2080, we'll be doing all the tests with our 2080 Super instead. We're running all the tests using our Intel 10700K bench. We chose this because of the higher clock speeds as it is still a faster platform when it comes down to gaming. And we wanna minimize any potential bottlenecks. With all of that out of the way, Let's get into the gaming benchmarks. And spoiler alert, in every single test we did, 3080 was faster. So we will focus on the actual improvement amount and also specifically on the one percentiles, as these are the ones that ensure smooth gameplay. Starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1080p, there is a 22% improvement over 2080 Super. At 1440p, the difference jumps to 50% and at 4K, the difference is 64%. When we look at the raw frame rates, we essentially moved from 1440p to a comfortable 4K gaming. In Ghost Recon Breakpoint, while using DirectX 11, improvements to both 1080p and 1440p are about 27%, and then 4K is 46%. In this title, it looks like 4K gaming with 60 FPS and above is becoming possible using RTX 3080, but it is a little bit close to the line. When looking at the same game but using Vulkan API, the story is very different. Here at 1080p, the older card was doing really well, and we only see 7% improvement from RTX 3080, and only 15% and 1440p. On the other hand, in 4K, we double the frame rate and hit 74 FPS at 1 percentile, making this a very capable card for 4K gaming. Next, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, and this game is a challenge to run on any PC. With RTX 2080 Super, at best you could run it at 1080p, and even then, 1 percentiles are below 60. RTX 3080, on the other hand, improves 1080p score by 60% and 1440p score by 54%, pulling off a really good 1440p gaming experience. Another challenging game is Total War Three Kingdoms, and here we have a moderate 16% improvement at 1080p and a whopping double frame rate at 1440p. Just like in the last game, 4K is still somewhat challenged, but even so, it is still very impressive jump, a whole resolution class. Next, we have a game that supports ray tracing and also DLSS. It's Metro Exodus, and while this game may not have the best ray tracing effects, at the same time, it does provide us with a great representation of how it taxes your system and how much performance can be recovered using DLSS. First, we need to have a baseline where both DLSS and ray tracing are turned off. At 1080p, we get about 40% improvement by switching to RTX 3080, and about 48% at 1440p. To accompany this, we have about 55% improvement on 4K. Unfortunately, even with the upgrade, the raw frame rate just barely passes an acceptable level at 1080p. Setting ray tracing to ultra immediately destroys both graphics cards, but even so, we see performance increase from using RTX 3080 at 1080p of 56%, at 1440p is 61%, and at 4K, 76%. With DLSS enabled, things change. There is a 38 to 46% improvement between the resolutions, actually making this game playable at 1080p and borderline playable at 1440p, while ray tracing is on. 
This truly highlights the power of the next gen RT and Tensor cores. To quickly recap, I believe in all the games we've covered, in order to truly have a good experience, the frame rate at 1 percentile should be of at least 60 FPS and above. With this in mind, in most games that we've benchmarked, if you take 2080 Super and swap it with 3080, you can safely turn up the settings by at least one full resolution class. Or like in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, we jumped from 65 FPS at 1080p to 60 FPS at 4K, which is really impressive. If we focus on ray tracing, there's definitely been a massive improvement and together with DLSS, this generation leap allows you to either choose one tier up in terms of resolution or enable ray tracing and at least not lose out at reasonable frame rates at your current resolution. This provides users with a better choice. By the way, if you'd like us to do a more dedicated video about ray tracing, let us know so we can do more test titles and do a deep dive into it. Gaming aside, with 10 gigabytes of very fast VRAM and clearly great computational power, it should do really well in productivity tasks such as video editing, transcoding and rendering. We ran a few tests to check this out, first one being Handbrake. As you can see, there is no difference in performance, but this is due to CPU bottleneck. On the other hand, when running Blender, the results are simply astonishing. In BMW test, we more than halved the rendering times. When doing a longer classroom test, the difference is even more prominent. This is where I can see that direct two times improvement over 2080. To be fair, we have much more than two times if we consider that we're using 2080 Super, which is about 10% faster than the standard 2080. We also have a very special test for video editors out there, particularly people using Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve. But relative performance difference is useful for everybody. In this test created by Puget Systems, the performance increase between the two cards is considerable. We're looking at 24% improvement on an overall score while editing at 4K. Elements that require a lot of GPU computational power like open effects or noise reduction have improved as high as 50%, making this card a considerable bump in performance for all creators. Next, we want to check how loud this card gets. And once again, we use this in comparison to 2080 Super. This test is only to check the relative loudness in an open air bench. So depending on individual cases, final noise results will be different for everybody. We tested the fans at three speeds, 60, 80, and 100%. While at 60%, the RTX 3080 is actually below our room floor level at 38.5 decibel. So the sound meter registers only ambient sound here. RTX 2080 Super, on the other hand, is at 46 decibel, and it is certainly audible. When turning both to 80%, we have 45 decibel on the 3080 and 56 decibel on 2080 Super. Considering sound loudness doubles every 10 decibel, this is now a massive difference. The noise coming from 3080 is more like a gentle hum, but 2080 Super is actually very loud. When we set the fans to full, of course, both of them are screaming, but 3080 is still only 55 decibel, while 2080 Super is reaching 60. Since we're in the subject of noise, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, while benchmarking at 1080p, we could hear coil noise from the RTX 3080. To be honest, it was only audible while the bench was right next to us and only for a small part of the test. We didn't hear it in any other scenarios, but we'll keep testing. Right. That is a lot of information on this new card. To be honest, I was very skeptical when hearing the phrases, greatest generation leap ever. But then after carrying out the test, we found the compelling arguments in multiple scenarios. And in some, it does actually deliver two times the performance of 2080. It is definitely a very exciting product and it finally opens up the extremely premium performance for a more reasonably premium price. I can't wait to test all other upcoming cards. If you want to check out any of the items we've tested today, we'll leave the links in the description below. I hope this was useful. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.